Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Come on, everybody, stand up, stand up, stand up. It's late. Stretch a little bit. Move around. Thank you. Hors d'oeuvres and cocktails follow my speech. Oh. Oh, well, I was close. Siéntese. Sit down. That's the extent of my Spanish. That's better. Um, we're going to do things a, a, little, a, little, a little different than some of the other speakers. And there's been a lot of information that's been covered today, and I think all of it has been extremely valuable and necessary. So yes, there's going to be a little bit of overlap with other speakers and other concepts that have been presented, but I think you'll, you'll get the picture. OK, I'm not getting any picture. OK, well, maybe we do it this way. Maybe we're not going to do it that way. Which way? This button? I'm gonna, OK, we'll, we'll go forward from here. Ah, OK. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I have been an entrepreneur myself since most of you have been alive, with the except of a few of my colleagues. That would take in most of you. Um, I have started eight companies. Not all have been successful. My wife will attest to that. Um, I have been CEO of a publicly held company, which we took public on the NASDAQ. And that was my largest success. And you've done two turnarounds, which has been enormously gratifying to see, because both of them still are in, are in existence. And I started ICANN New York as a traditional incubator back in 2005, which we transitioned to a virtual incubator and expanded uh, in 2010. In 2013, we founded ICANN Global as a virtual acceleration network on a global basis. We are now represented in about 16 countries around the world. And our focus is on licensing, partnering, and commercialization. We leave the R&D to the academics and the engineers. We focus on the hard stuff, which is actually selling stuff. Um, one of my passions, as I was told to bring up today, I, I race sports cars on weekends all over the United States and even in Canada. And there's a lot of analogy to be made between racing and doing business. A lot of racing is based on trust, learning, and knowledge. When you're going at 130 miles an hour and you're six inches away from the person in front of you, that's trust. I know what that person's going to do. And in order to do that, you have to go through a learning curve. The first time we went racing, I would never have gotten six inches away from anybody. And I didn't want anybody six inches away from me because the predictability becomes very different. So it's a learning process. Entrepreneurship is a learning process. You're not going to be Mark Zuckerberg tomorrow. It's not going to happen. This fact was brought up earlier, uh, Mike, Mike did this during his presentation, and it's absolutely true. What's going to stop you from failing? What's going to keep you out of this? Now, what a lot of people don't tell you is some, is some um, truths that venture capital companies are very good at burying their dead. They don't promote that they failed. 
the actual number of successes in venture capital in the United States is someplace around 15 percent. That's not a very good batting average. If I were to tell you that I was successful in whatever I was doing only 15 percent of the time, you wouldn't be very interested in what I had to say. But that is the fact. Now, venture capital is usually, usually not involved with early stage or startup companies. They're later stage. So their successes are bigger. Their failures are bigger too. And what, they, what a lot of entrepreneurs don't know how to do is to think like an investor. In other words, if you were investing your own money in you, what would you like to know? Well, we're going to give you some reasons. We're going to give you some questions. We're going to give you some guidelines and some practical things that you should be doing to think like an investor. You got to remember, investors are not your friends. Your Uncle Harry, who gave you $50, is your friend. He's your family. He'll never go away. Investors are in this for only one reason and one reason only. And what's that? Exactly. So what does an investor want to know about you? Now, the word you becomes very important. Is an investor looking at your new technology? Fine. The investor wants to know if you understand what you're doing. And that's often not the case. So it becomes very important that you know who you are. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? And how do you overcome a lot of those weaknesses? What are you going to do as an innovator, as a founder, to inspire confidence that someone is going to give you money to grow your dream. One of the critical parts of this, can you be coached and advised? I see a lot of entrepreneurs who know everything there is to know about just about every topic under the sun. And when you try and teach them, there's a high level of resistance. They know, or they think they know, their market, their product, what they do better than anybody. But what they don't know how to do is to think like an investor. How does the investor see you? So let's get in a little farther. Do you understand your target market? Do you understand your industry? I mean, really understand it. Let me give you an example. We see a lot of companies, especially in the energy and IT space. We had a young man present to us who came all the way from uh, Arkansas to New York to present be before our group. He had a really interesting biochemistry to do biodiesel, which could convert into lots of different things. He came in with a business plan about this thick. It would make a great doorstop because that's what it was worth. We had an expert team assembled in the room to interview him, much like a venture capital presentation. He got about 10 minutes into his presentation, and one of our advisors stood up and said, stop, just stop. And you could see the sweat starting to form and he was kind of hunched over now and didn't know what was coming next. But it was very interesting because he held up, my advisor held up a piece of paper. He says, do you know this company? I said, no. He says, well, they're out of New Zealand. They do what you do. They have all the patents that you're going for. And not only that, they have the patents that surround the patents. And then he held up another piece of paper. You know this company? He said, no. Now he was pretty in trouble. He said, well, they're out of Germany. 
whatever patents that company that doesn't have, they do. What are you going to do? If you develop what you say you're going to develop, you're going to be in breach of all these patents, you're going to get sued, and you're out of business before you ever start. In other words, you've got to do your homework. You've got to know, and the investor has to know, you're the expert. Before they give you money, they have to understand who you are and what you've done. What is your competitive advantage? We've had a great day here today, and we've sat with some very wonderful entrepreneurs looking for various things. And in some cases, they didn't understand the business they were in. Who's the customer? Who am I going to sell to? Who's going to buy this thing? You've got to understand what is your competitive advantage. Is this a real business or is it a hobby? Are you looking to be paid as a worker or are you the management team? Can you assemble a management team? Do you have skin in the game? Now, everybody here, all the entrepreneurs, are looking for money. Do you have money? Well, no, I have time. Well, if your company isn't worth anything because you haven't sold anything, what is the time worth? Very little. It's important that you're able to generate funds from friends, family, fools, yourself. For my first company, I secretly mortgaged my house. If my wife knew that, well, she found out later, but we're still married, so it's okay. But I mortgaged the house. There was no one there to give me money. So we borrowed it and made it, made it, made it pay off. Do you know what investors are expecting? Someone just came into the room that we had a lovely conversation that he's willing to give up 30% to an investor. I said, shh, don't tell anybody that. You don't start a negotiation by telling them what you want. You got to know what they want. You had a whole conversation here before about industry averages, what the return on investments are. You have to know this. You have to know in your industry or something close to your industry, what are investors looking for? What's the return on investment? How long? How long do you have to make this money work? Can you go back for more money? You understand. How much capital do you need? We're going to touch on this a little bit more in a little bit, but most companies undervalue how much they need by at least a factor of two. The process is very important. Have you really sat down and evaluated yourself and your concept? Have you been able to find partners, advisors, people to support your belief and inspire that confidence? Understanding your market, researching the industry, what does an investor want? Developing your plan, testing your concept. We had one company here today who was launching a new product and tested it with 27 people. How big was their market? 5.4 billion people. 27 is a great start. We need more. You need to understand the consumer. Can you prepare an investor presentation? Well, you could if you knew what an investor wanted to see. Are you the right person to lead this company? Are you really the CEO? Perhaps someone might be more effective. If you're shy, if you're inhibited, if you can't communicate well, you might not be the right person. I would say eight out of 10, eight out of 10 presentations that we see, the person giving the presentation doesn't end up as the CEO. It's a tough job. Ego is a wonderful thing. It can destroy you. So what are the objectives? You have to execute on everything. 
if you can convince yourself after all this self introspection that you're the person to run the company, you have to know everything there is to know about every one of those issues. So what we've done, we've developed a 10-point program that we think is really important that you should take notes of to evaluate what you need to do. You need to understand what is the problem your product is trying to solve. What is the opportunity? How are you going to validate a market? What is the magic of your solution? In other words, what makes your product your product? What separates it from everybody else out there? Everybody is all wonderful and gaga about business models. At the end of the day, you gotta be able to sell stuff. Does your business model create a revenue stream that does what you need it to do. We've kind of discussed competition. Do you know who it is? We're in a very big world. Technology and innovation is not a local activity. It's now global. Your competition used to be around the corner or in Silicon Valley. Now it can be right here in Santiago. And if you're living in Toronto or New York or Zimbabwe, you have to know that there's competition here, who they are, what they're doing. Maybe collaboration is in your future. This is a very interesting thing because I see a lot of technologies developed by engineers. Engineers make rotten salespeople. They're great engineers. Can you communicate that? What is a sales strategy? How do you communicate that? How do you develop it? Financials and metrics. Well, understanding the principles of a financial statement. Do you know what a balance sheet is? Do you know what an income statement is? Can you work with it? Can you graph it? Can you speak to it to tell an investor how he or she is going to make money? Can you recruit a management team? It can't be just you. Well, maybe it's you if you're doing an eBay store from your computer and your pajamas. That could be you, and you could be the whole management team. But if you're building a company, it can't be just you. You have to be able to recruit people. How do you recruit people? Well, you have to inspire that same confidence in building a team as you do an investor, because your management team is your first level of investors. They're investing in you. What are the risks? Early stage investing is all about risk. You know, as we've heard in a couple of the presentations today, if one out of 10 deals is going to work, how do you get to be the one? How do you tell an investor, here are the risks, and here's how we're going to avoid them? What is your status? Where are you? Don't fool yourself. If you're here, you're here. If you're here, you're here. And if you're here, no one's going to believe you. What is the investment opportunity? How does this investor make money? When does this investor make money? Ever? If there are follow-on products, if there are new markets, if there's globalization, you need to be clear and tell that investor how he or she is going to make money at this and why he or she should bring along all their friends and all their contacts to invest in this. Well, finding investors is sometimes a very difficult source and internationally becomes very interesting. We heard a lot of people discuss today various ways of investing. And here in Latin America, investors are keen on not being the first check in the door. They want to be the second one. 
So that means you've got to find the first one. Is it going to be a government, an economic development organization, the World Bank, Uncle Harry? Who is your first, who is your first investor? You have to be very careful as to not dilute what you're doing by finding the wrong investor. Is a venture capital group at your early stage your best investment opportunity? Probably not. Why? You're going to give away the farm. And you will. You will give away the farm. And they know it. We've had a discussion today with several companies that we've talked to about maybe not finding an equity investor. Maybe it's a strategic partner you're looking for. Maybe it's a competitor. Maybe it's somebody already in the industry who can perform a function for you like marketing, distribution, sales, access to clients, access to talent. You need to investigate. And there, there's crowdfunding. There are experts far more knowledgeable than me on crowdfunding, but it's an option. Finding advisors is one of my favorite topics. You know, we charge for our services. And a lot of the expectations are that incubators, accelerators, advisors, mentors should be free. I don't happen to subscribe for that. We had a discussion earlier today, Don and I, that if you walk into your accountant's office or your lawyer's office, you expect to pay. What are you paying for? You're paying for their expertise. When you bring on a mentor or an advisor, even if you can't afford it, I would offer to pay them. You'll worry about how after, because it inspires a level of professionalism. You are an expert. They want to be convinced you're an expert. Now, there have been other conversations here today about different types of, of funding. Um, one very interesting thing is that you have to understand the type of company you need to be because, let's say you're a sole proprietor and you do an LLC. Well, you have to understand the intricacies of what that is. Can you take on an investor? Well, if you have certain types of companies, you don't have shares. You have members. An LLC has members in a lot of cases, not as a corporation. It's not prone to investment. So you need to understand the various types of corporate formation, consult with an expert, how should I incorporate? We have one particular client right now. <clears throat> He's a very early stage company in the uh, battery business. And all he wants is to form his company. And I said, OK, tell me how you're going to form your company. What do you want to be? Well, I want to do this, this, and this. And I'm, we want to go public. And I said, great. You registered as a sole proprietor. Who's going to invest in a sole proprietor? Nobody. Because you don't have any stock. You can't give equity. Oh. And then there's that aha moment. What did I do? Oh, crap. You know, and it goes, it goes from there. Be very careful how you form your corporation. Well, you know, we come back to understanding and executing on everything. Doing your due diligence. Do you think your investor is going to do due diligence on you? Uh-huh. How many of you subscribe to Facebook? OK, are there any pictures of you dancing naked at a party with a margarita in your hand? Well, I happen to know one particular client who was offered a deal for $3 million for an investor, by an investor. And the investor started doing due diligence and found out on Facebook that this particular guy was thrown out of college twice, was arrested once for drugs, and was caught with the beer 
standing on top of the bar, naked as a jaybird, the investment was, was yanked. He got nothing. Be careful. Okay? Before you start pitching to an investor, make sure you're, all your clothes are on. Keep your drinking habits to a minimum. And don't, God, please, don't put it on Facebook. <laughs> understand your valuations. It's always a, a huge topic. Well, understand that if you're a startup company and you haven't sold anything, what's your valuation? Zero. You got nothing. You got nothing until somebody buys something. Well, here's our last rule. This is the 2x rule. Everything costs twice as much to do than you estimate. And all of your good stuff, your sales and revenue, divide that by two. Now you're in a realistic ballpark. If you understand that and don't overpredict, you'll be much better off. This is a little chart. I'm not going to go through this, but you'll, you'll, you'll get the idea. This is what an entrepreneur thinks coming up here on, on that side of the screen. This is what an investor thinks. Understand, if you were investing in you, what would you want to know? What are the risks? How are you going to overcome them? Oh, you got to the bottom. OK. <laughs> so seeing your invest in business through an investor's eye, what are the hot points? Have patience. You're not going to be a billionaire tomorrow morning. Ain't going to happen. All right? So understand that. Deal with it. Keep your ego in check. And then there's lots of references out there. All right, now for the commercial message. What do we do? Well, we help companies like you. We do this. And this is what we've been doing for a whole bunch of years. All of our team are experienced entrepreneurs, business people, Fortune 500 executives, been there, done it. In order to qualify to be a member of our team, you have to have written a payroll check. There's not one academic who's ever lied in bed on a Thursday night dreamt about not being able to make payroll on Friday morning. That's what an entrepreneur is. And at the end of the day, it's not what you dream, but what have you sold? And that's what it comes down to. It boils down to a very simple process. What we've done, being virtual, we've assembled a team of executives, coaches, you name the industry. We've got over 150 me mentors sprinkled all over the world ready to help you with your specific issue. And by being anywhere in the world and accessing these people electronically and digitally, you can be anywhere. And you have access to this kind of talent. We specialize in new market opportunities, globalization, and business development through our network of feet on the street. I mentioned we're represented in 16 countries. We're all over the place and growing very quickly. I'm going to kind of pass through this. These are some of the things that we can help you with. I don't want to sell you a program or things that you don't need. We can customize this to what you need, giving you access to the kind of talent you want. Um, and it's very important to understand that. Um, we have discussion, friendly discussion about some, with some of the folks here today, how long should these things be? We think, I think, incubation, acceleration, whatever the heck you want to call it, because all those lines are blurred, should take no more than two years tops from beginning to end. You can't go any more than that, because if you think you understand it, it's already obsolete. So your window of opportunity is very small. It's very close. You need to get there, and you need to get there now if you think this is going to work. Because tomorrow could be all over. 
So I hope that by teaching you to think like an investor, being critical of yourself, you have a better understanding of what they're looking for. This presentation is going to be online, and you'll have access to it. And I would really like to thank Jim and uh, Miriam for inviting me here to do this. And I think this has been a great conference. It's been well attended, and I hope it's worth your while. If you can take something out of it, there's enough experience here to fill rooms and volumes of books. Just do it. Thank you very much. Two questions. We have, we have time for two questions. Anybody? Somebody asked something stupid. What kind of margarita do you like? Yes. Just because you said that, uh, can I ask for something stupid? So Good. I, um, it's, uh, I mean, the, the thing that, that is uh, more uh, concerning is uh, um, when you approach to uh, an investor, you obviously, um, or for my, my, my startup, has no experience in the financial uh, industry. So uh, I always uh, feel that the numbers in the presentation are like um, weak. And, and what, what, I, what I wonder is, uh, there is something that we can um, learn uh, from books or to, to make that, uh, that uh, a graphic designer like me or a, a, a computer programming uh, can um, learn and, 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 and yeah, go it's to a, a more professional and financial approach? Build a team. If you're expert at doing this, Find somebody who's experienced an expert at doing that. Get them on board. You know, and in, if, you're, if you know that your numbers are weak and wrong, do you think a, a really sophisticated investor won't see right through that? You're disqualified. You're out. It's not going to happen. So I said, you have to execute on every part of what you're presenting to an investor. They're not buying your product or your service. They're buying you. So if you don't have the ability to lead, bring on the people, bring on the talent, bring on a team that's going to work cohesively where everybody does their job, they're not going to invest in you. So go outside yourself. Say, I don't know this. I need to learn. You need to learn the basics because if you bring on an expert, how do you know if the expert is doing it right or wrong? you got to learn it. You have to learn. And that's what part of this exercise is all about. If you don't learn, people can steal from you. They can screw you blind. Okay? And you'll never know. you got to learn. you got to ask questions. Thank you. My pleasure. Anybody else? Sir. One with the microphone. Anybody. What was your biggest challenge to overcome after you mortgaged your house? Uh, telling my wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had to make it work. Uh, there, was no, there were no other sources of funds. That was it. So what ended up happening was I was working for a company, a publishing company, and computerizing their entire operations. I spent about nine months working for this little company and did everything and way above that we were, he had asked me to do. On a Friday afternoon, he calls me into his office and he says, I have to let you go. I said, why? Things are great. He says, things are great. You did a phenomenal job. Thank you very much. And I said, okay, this has never happened to me before. This was a whole new experience. So I said, can I use your phone? He says, sure, you want me to wait outside? I said, no, I prefer you stayed right there. I picked up the phone, sitting on his desk, and I called my wife. And I said, honey, don't get upset, but I just got fired. And she started, what are we going to do? And I said, no, don't cry, don't worry, because if these idiots can make it, we can make it. So I had to thank him, because he was the guy that launched my business. 
So that was on a Friday. Monday morning, yes, I mortgaged the house. Shh, don't tell. And I went out and we started our own company. And we got into a whole area of publishing because I stole every one of his clients. And not only did I steal his clients, within nine months, he was out of business. So, you know, you got to look for inspiration wherever you can find it. So that was my biggest challenge in life. And it was just nothing but uphill from there. So just go for it. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.